All right, everybody, welcome back to live stream under the moonshine number 309. This is actually part 17 of the letter. This is going to be Rebecca part two. Uh, last episode, last chapter, we were trying to do, a, you know, I'm trying to do like one full day in every part. The last chapter was like an hour and 45 minutes long. And it was the first uh, point of view of Rebecca, who uh, is a uh, friend of Isabella's, uh, an acquaintance of Isabella's. And uh, that was really intense. They, uh, Rebecca was driving Isabella home after the whole theater thing, going to Zach's first show. And it had been a very eventful day. And Rebecca had seen this whole haunted it thing. And of course, thought it was because she was recently sick and was blaming it on her, you know, being sick and stuff like that, and refused to believe that what she was seeing was real. But she's pretty much seen the same thing as like at least like four or five other people now, including Isabella, the thing that killed, uh, who is it, uh, Rose, who was a real estate agent that worked with uh, Isabella. It killed her dead and left uh, bloodstains all over the wall. So, yeah, it's been intense. This has been a really good, a very suspenseful and unpredictable horror visual novel. I've really been enjoying it. It's been about 10 or 12 days since we read uh, part 16, and that was in Live Stream of the Moonshine number 308. So tonight we get back to the letter in part 17, and we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off with Rebecca. Yeah, the next day after that suspenseful drive home where she saw the thing in her own back seat. She almost had a wreck and Isabella was asleep while she saw it. Isabella woke up because they almost had a wreck. And uh, of course, Rebecca is not believing any of it. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. October 25th, a Tuesday. It begins innocent, innocently enough. Let's go ahead and check out the relationship, see where everybody's at. We've increased our relationship a little bit with Isabella in part 16. Uh, and we went down a little bit with Ashton because of a disagreement they had, I think, at the uh, the movie theater. So, yeah. Okay, and then let's go ahead and check up on the journals. Just to catch up here. Right here. After watching uh, Blue Fonse, the movie, Zach, Zach's first movie, Isabella tried making small talk with Rebecca, but the latter was in a prickly mood and was not interested. On their way home, Rebecca glimpsed the something suspicious sitting in the back seat of her own car. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that pretty much narrows down an hour and 45 minute chapter I read uh, 10 days ago into two sentences. <laughs> the journal doesn't give us a lot of details, so... Definitely go check that out if you want to get all the expanse, horror, and drama that was in Part 16. Well, it begins innocently enough. Tuesday morning arrives like any other day before it, bright and clear. I like hearing the birds. Even though it comes with an extra helping of the unusual October weather, I appreciate being able to catch a glimpse of the clear skies lately. After going through about a bout sick of uh, sickness last week, <clears throat> it does something to lift the mood of what would otherwise be a dreary morning. Okay. And despite being mostly a creature of habit, I wind up waking, er waking up earlier than usual because of it. Still, no earlier than Isabella, it appears. I've assumed she'll take a day or two off because of what happened to Miss Cooper. Yeah, Rose. Uh, her best friend, real estate agent. But that doesn't seem to be the case. The sound of the morning news drifts from her unit when I walk past uh, on my way to the mailbox. Chances are around this hour, she's already dressed and ready to go. So they are neighbors in this uh, apartment building. Uh, Rebecca and Isabella. Uh, yes, so chances of this hour, she's already dressed and ready to go, probably just waiting for the next bus to arrive. I've tried following her example before, but I don't think I'll be repeating that. Ugh, really? How can anyone be up before the sun is up? Mm -mm. It's a habit she got from home, she said, 
instilled in her by the kind of life that she grew up in. Well, that makes sense. Like clockwork, it's always at 4 a.m., either to help with chores or prepare her little siblings for school. Yeah, I don't think even if I was a kid and I had to wake up at 4 a.m., like all the years of my childhood, I can't imagine still waking up at 4 a.m. as an adult. I mean, I think it says Isabella's 26 years old or something like that. Yeah, I think I'd, I think I'd sleep in until at least 6, I'm just saying. It surprised me the first time. He just didn't look like someone who could wake up that early. In the end, I'll simply pass it off as one of the many things anyone will have to get used to around her. Not that I'll ever fully understand. I am my parents' only child. We aren't well off, but so far, I've lived a relatively easy life. I didn't have to think about bills or food the next day, or paying for any sibling's tuition on top of my own, or, support, uh, or supporting a sick father's medication. And that's exactly what Isabella is doing, is trying to support, you know, her siblings and her college tuition, and mainly supporting her sick father's medication. And they're overseas. All I have to worry about are my grades. If it had gained mom and dad's approval, or what we'd ha or what we'd be having for dinner. When I put next to hers, they all pale in comparison. They look less like problems and more like petty issues this way. <laughs> Petty issues. But as unimportant as it all sounds, sometimes its ugly head rears at the most inappropriate moments. And sometimes they come through your mailbox in the form of a, of a fancy looking letter. Pretty ribbons and all. Oh wow, that is a fancy envelope. Whoever sent this has spent silly money on the envelope alone. Yeah. Definitely the ribbon. That's a fancy envelope for sure. Verging on utterly ridiculous, really. I can already imagine Isabella wrinkling her nose once she sees this. And then she'll complain about unnecessary expenses and rich people problems. I'm almost afraid to touch it myself. Huh. As if simply brushing a hand against this crisp surface will be enough to put a crease in it. And it'll be a terrible sight to the sender. But as extravagant as I find this... It isn't really the first time I've received one. Most of the time, it's not even for me. So who am I to complain? Now, let's be honest. Even if somebody sent a fancy envelope with a ribbon on it and stuff like that, I'm just being real. If I got this damn thing in my in, uh, mailbox, it'd probably be crumpled. The corner would be bent. It would already have a lot of creases, as she mentioned, in it. The ribbon would be frayed and dirty. Like, I'm just saying... You know, unless it was like a local delivery and just delivered locally or something like that. But if it came from across the country, yeah, it would not look nearly that pretty. I'm just saying. Either way, no look of surprise crosses my face. Once I flip the envelope over to see my parents' names are written in a neat script. Oh, wow. Nothing new, then. So it's from our own parents. Okay. Mr. Alistair and Miss Elisa Gills. Their years in the uh, uh, ac academe naturally brought it with various connections. People from other fields, art, science, business, politics, you name it. This one, though, gives off a much personal vibe. Letters like this usually come from old students. People who have grown fond of my parents. And they, in turn, treat their children like their own. I've only met a few of them. Uh, most have moved on to become successful in their chosen careers. A little, uh, and little letters like this are their way of expressing their gratitude. It's one thing mom and dad are proud of. Rightfully so. And I am happy for them. But there are times. There are times I wish they'll remember they have a daughter here. Aw. The real one. Not that it's any important now. Of any importance now. It's not like they didn't raise me well and provide for me. They did. I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for all their hard work. And like a dutiful, dutiful child, I do everything I can to give back. Even if, it, even if it's as small a thing as letting them know they've got another mail waiting for them. 
The phone rings uh, for a good moment before someone answers. Mom. Her voice is warm as I remember. Becca? Hi, Mom. How's the conference going? Well enough. Until your dad sprained his ankle. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is it bad? I'm all right. In case anyone in this family cares to listen, I'm all right. Very much alive, darling. And there you have uh. it. He'll be up and walking in a few weeks. Don't worry. We're going to have to extend our stay here until it heals, though. Aw. Is something the matter? Nothing big. Just that this mail arrived for you this morning. A lie. Thankfully, she doesn't notice. Although I'm going to be, although I'm going to be honest, a small part of me yearns for her to do so and ask me about it. But I put I put down that idea almost as soon as it surfaces. I shouldn't make them fret. They're busy. Hmm. What does it say? Raise your glasses, give cheers to the good times, blah, blah. Becca Manners, that isn't how I taught you to read. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You are cordially... Uh, it's an invitation, Mum, for a housewarming party. From, uh, Hannah? The name rings a bell, though at the moment I can't recall when or where I've heard it recently. It must be nothing too important if I didn't bother committing it to my memory. There are a lot of Hannahs in the world, so who knows? Hmm. Hannah. Hannah. Um, she also wrote you a note, Mum. It says you used to be her private tutor at the Evans Mansion. Ah, yep. And that she misses you and would love... would love to see you two again. It makes my heart clench to read another openly say those words to them. The same ones I want to tell them myself. I want to see you too, Mom. Dad. It's been years since we've been together as a family. And if there's one thing that hasn't changed from my childhood, it's that Mom and Dad are still busy with their respective careers. Oh, damn. Out of the country, away on some meeting uh, or symposium, and symposium, sometimes for months on end. It only grew more frequent with it frequent within the years until I'm old enough to live on my own. I'd like to think that's how I've become independent at such an early age. They've always praised me for that. At times, I wish they didn't. Evans? Oh, I remember now. Uh -uh. Honey, it's Hannah. Hannah Evans. Remember? Bright girl, two years older than Becca? Didn't she get married a few years ago? Seven now, I think. But nah, they grow up so fast, these kids. Yeah, she invited us to that too. Fonte de Medici. But we missed that one because you had to present your paper in Singapore. We did send her a note after. Still a shame we couldn't attend, though. What is it about this time? She sent another invite. For a housewarming party. Becca, when is it? This Friday, Mum. Oh, that's too bad. We'd love to be there. But Da's not in a condition to go walking around. I guess we'd have to decline again. I really miss that girl. I could go in your place. I let it slip without even thinking about it. Uh oh. Personally, I've never heard I've been fond of gatherings, regardless of how simple people make it seem. But if there's one thing I hate hearing, is that uh, the disappointment uh, tone in Mom's voice always ranks first. Whether it's directed at me or some other thing, it really doesn't matter. Are you sure? Don't you have work this Friday? The event will be in the evening, Mum. It shouldn't take anything away from my schedule. It's all right. The invites are two people. I can bring someone with me so things don't get boring. Hmm. I see. Maybe you can also invite Ashton? <laughs> Mum, that's a sure no from him. He hates attending parties. Hmm. But, but I'll see what I can do. If not, I can always bring Isabella with me. You know her. She won't say no if there's food involved. <laughs> okay. If it's not going to be a big problem for you, I don't see why not. We owe you this one, darling. No problem, Mum. I'll even say hi to Hana for you. Uh -uh. Please do. And let her know we'd love to see her once we're back in the city. Leave her our number or something. I will. What you know. The two of you would have become really good friends. Don't you remember? You met with her once. 
if my memory serves me right. You were 12 then? This too, I cannot recall. It's probably one of those meetings where we only talk a bit before going on our own way. If she did leave an impression, I'm pretty sure I would have written about it somewhere, or at least recognized her name. Yeah, true. As it is, the only people I remember clearly from that time in my life is Ashton and Mandy. To some extent. Mom must sense my confusion because she laughs. Don't push yourself too hard, darling. Really? It felt like having two daughters back then. Sometimes I wish they didn't send her away to boarding school. But, well, you know how often that goes with them. Still, try talking to her while you're there. Oh, we'll see. I'll let you know what happens after. I'm looking forward to it, darling. Take care of yourself. Will do. You too, Mom. Bye. Uh, tell Da to be careful next time. Mm -mm. And she chuckles then. A hearty one, tender, and always a light on my ears. She may be a stern teacher, but this is the part of her I love the most. The sound of it still echoes, even though her call comes to an abrupt end, bringing with it a memory from so many years ago. When life and responsibilities that accompany adulthood are things far from our own minds. If given the chance, I, uh, I'd love to go back to those days. I don't dwell on it, though, shaking it all away almost as soon as the memory forms a clear picture in my head. I've always wondered how Isabella can easily pretend everything's normal over a phone call, and then bounce back to her usual self immediately after. I've seen her do it plenty of times. For me, it just drains whatever energy I have. And with a whole day of teaching still ahead of me, I cannot afford to look exhausted in front of my students. Even for a wee bit, it's never a good example to set. Yeah, for sure. So, with another sigh, I put everything in the back of my mind and tread back to my room. The rest of my day awaits. Okay. Fifteen minutes later, I'm heading back out, dressed for the day, my car keys in hand. Ordinarily, I don't stop for anything. There's never a need to. That's the beauty of this apartment complex. It's quiet and everyone keeps to themselves. No useless platitudes in the morning, no need to wear a smile on your face lest other people are nosy enough to ask. Today, however, the morning broadcast still plays from Isabella's room. My brisk pace slows to a stop and a frown gradually forms in my face. She hasn't left. Of course, this is not usual. There are times when I've left earlier than she did, like last Friday, before their open house. But those days are very few and far between. It only happens in the direst circumstances, though the last part of that might be a bit of an exaggeration. However, with what's happened in the last few days, maybe today is one. The death of a friend is something anyone can br it isn't something anyone can just brush off. And for someone like Isabella? Isabella's the kind who gets attached to people really easily. With Zachary, Ashton, and I, that has been the case. I can't even imagine what she might be going through right now, especially when the woman was someone she owed a lot, despite their training being brief. I've given her the space last night in deference, but perhaps today might be the proper time to just check on her. Oh, whatever. I've still got time anyway. And with light steps, I move closer to her door, and already poised to knock. Still, I don't do so until I hear her answer me. Isabella? Belle? Are you in there? No answer. After a second, I finally knock, lightly so I don't disturb her in case she is sleeping and has merely left the uh, telly running last night. Never mind how she uh, never lets this happen. Not ever. Waste of electricity and all. I just want to check on you before I leave. Is that okay? Are you going to work today? Belle? No answer. Still nothing. I'm about to leave. If you want, I can drop you off. Another round of knocking. And then I'm fishing out a copy of her key from my bag and unlocking the door. She lent it years ago after I complained about the mess and offered my help in cleaning things up. 
I thought the gesture was completely unnecessary back then. After all, I could always knock. But she never did bother taking them from me, always returning it or turning away from the conversation whenever I insisted. At one point, I simply stopped trying to hand it back to her. Isabella? I'm coming in, alright? Yeah, something, something's not right. And without waiting for her answer, I push the door open and step inside. Dun dun dun! Yeah, she's got a mess again. Tuesday morning. Her unit's still a damn mess. Instant noodle soups on the table, a pile of clothes on one side, paper strewn about everywhere, and an unkempt bed, among other things. This. This much is a given. It will always be a given. I've been here several times already, and I still ponder how she could function like a human being with a place in this kind of a state. However, that's neither here nor there. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but it's certainly not finding an empty flat. Granted, she could have left earlier, far earlier than usual. But she never ever leaves without making sure she's unplugged everything. That's something she just doesn't forget to do. It doesn't help that her bathroom appears unused this morning. Another habit, and it can only mean she hasn't been here since... last night? Perhaps, perhaps even since this morning after Miss Cooper's death. Either idea does not sit well with me. With that, uh, that w what with the news we've been hearing lately? The authorities are still trying to find the cause of death for all the victims. Early investigation revealed most of them were employed under Briar Realty Corporation at the time of death. Damn. Meanwhile, BRC has refused to comment on this. Gathering my wits, I immediately place a call to her mobile phone. It rings for a good minute, the sound a comfort in itself. But when another minute rolls by without her answering? Well, I'm not a woman to prone, that's prone to panicking. Sudden bouts of temper, maybe, but never panic, despite how I may sound when I speak. Yeah, that's a little bit scary. And when it ultimately goes straight to her voicemail, a sigh is the only thing I ha have to let out. The pause doesn't last long, though. In the next moment, my fingers are already moving across the screen in search of the two people who might be able to help. It's Ashton's no number that I find that I find first, and I dial. I call it a habit, but even Isabella thinks he's dependable when the situation calls for it, despite how much they give each other grief. That already says a lot about him. There's Zachary, but around this hour he's probably still sleeping, if he has freelance work. It's very likely he's gotten himself in bed. Yeah, I think this is the night where Isabella went over to Zachary's house and fell asleep in his bed. He's the last person I want to bother, if anything. The wait doesn't take long. Soon, a click and then Ashton's voice echoes through the receiver, rough and still heavy with sleep. He never did grow fond of mornings. Becca? Christ, what time is it? Uh, what's up? Not you, apparently. Hmm. No, Ash, hold on. This is important. Becca, stake out last night. Make this quick. I still got a few hours before the chief bothers me. Sorry, I'll let you go back to sleep after. It's just that. Wait, you were on a stakeout last night? Did I say that? Ah, shit. <laughs> Oops. Forget I said that. Forget I said anything. Forget we had this conversation. So, you have no idea. or whatever for a second. Belle didn't come home last night. She's gone! <sighs> Isabella! Instead of an answer, a brief pause comes after. Followed by something blunt and heavy hitting a hard service and a string of rather colorful curses from him. Uh-oh. Ah! The moment might have been one of those many things I'll keep to myself and remember fondly in the next few days, if things aren't the way they are now. When he picks up again, there's no trace of sleep left in his voice. 
<sighs> Say that again, from the top. Isabella's gone, Ash. She didn't come home last night. Her flat's empty. She left her telly running. You know she doesn't do that at... Okay, Becca, stop. Calm down first. You're starting to panic. I'm not! You are. Breathe. Uh -uh. One person's not going to simply disappear like that. This is Isabella we're talking about. Did you try calling her? What did you think is the first thing I did? Uh -uh. She's not picking up. It went to her voicemail. How about Zach? Did you check with him? Not yet. I didn't want to bother him. You know he has trouble sleeping and all that. All right. I'll go ask Zach. I'll call you back. No, 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 wait! He ends the call before I can utter a single word of protest. But for the first time since entering this room, the tension is gone from my shoulders and my breathing has eased. The bed creaks as I sink down on it with a sigh. The telly still blares the same uninteresting news and I'm surrounded by clutter. All the same, it feels strangely calm to be here without worrying, or worry nagging at me. I'll have to apologize to Zachary later for sending Ashton his way this early. But for now, relying on the latter for this isn't the wrong choice. It never will be. There's something that I won't ever doubt in him, much like his promises. And true to his words, he calls back only a few moments, a few moments later uh, after the last one has ended. Not scared. She's with Zach. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. She could have at least sent a message last night. What are you, her mother? Uh-uh. It's one thing to hear that from Isabella, but also from Ashton? That's funny. I don't want to hear anything like that from you. <laughs> I'm serious. You've got to stop treating her like she's one of your students, Becca. You don't have to keep tabs on her every time. Last I checked, she's only three years younger than the two of us. That's almost a decade gap from those kids you're teaching, you know. Says the person who keeps calling her Scaredy Cat. Mm. I... I... that's... that's not related... at all. Anyway, I'll go check how she's doing. Don't stress yourself out. You go ahead to work. Wait, you? Don't you have a precinct to be at? Whatever happened to not treating her like one of my students? Because if anyone's going to ask me, I think you're doing the same thing. <laughs> That's she's got a point. Zach said it's an emergency. Something happened last night. Emergency? He didn't put in those exact same words, but it sounded like it. Ash, what really happened? Is Isabella fine? She's alright. She's safe. Zach let her stay the night after she... <sighs> Look, okay. Z-Man wasn't clear about it, but let me handle this. I'll check on her. I'll bring her home. Good man. That sounds like a lie if I've ever heard one. The sword where he omits things so people won't fret, and I'm not sure whether I should be happy he cares that much to do it. There shouldn't be a need for uh, for this between us, is there? We grew up together, didn't we? He knows I'm capable of at least hearing out the truth without it gnawing at me for the rest of the day. He knows me better than that. I know him better than that. Frankly, there's plenty of other things to say about this. But despite, and after all the trouble we went through, with how things are moving at the moment, only one, thro one thought now occurs to me. Okay, so we got a choice to make here. What should I say? I can handle it or sorry for the trouble? Um, I don't know. I mean, this visual novel does have endings, different endings based on your choices, but I can't really see this choice being a big deal here. I don't know, I'll just say I can handle it. Relationship status updated. Okay, did our relationship go up or down with that, with, uh... It went down. Him saying, me saying I can handle it. Wow. Okay, well I had a negative influence on our relationship with Ashton with that choice. Interesting. Why does he always have to go to such lengths for the person he met five years ago? I wish I could ask him that. I wish I could simply say to his face and finally get a straight answer from him instead of doing whatever this is we're doing. Instead of beating around the bush. Has the years changed us that much? Has adulthood changed us this much? You've done enough, Ash. Let me take it from here. Ashton is quiet for a little while, but I can almost see the frown in him. 
I hear the gears turning in his head. Oh, I kind of see why why the relationship went down a little bit now. Don't you have a class to teach today? Tuesdays are your busiest this school year, aren't they? Yeah, but someone has to check on her. And... And I don't want to impose on you any further. I've already disturbed your sleep. You're not imposing. Besides, I'm doing you a favor. I know you, Becca. You hate being late or missing a day of work for a very small thing. Leave this to me. You said you're waiting for a call from the chief. I'm dropping by the precinct anyway. There's some trouble I have to fix with those guys. It won't be completely out of the way. Ashton, I... I trail off at, uh, at loss for words at the end. And from the start, it's a losing battle. We may have been together for a long time, known each other for far better than the other people, but that doesn't mean we often see things eye to eye. Time and again, it's a matter of agreeing to disagree, and this is often how the status quo is kept. Whenever it comes to this, I can only accept it begrudgingly. <sighs> okay, whatever you want to do. I'll let you know what happened afterwards, I promise. I'll call you later. You have a good day. Bye. I admit the way he puts it isn't comforting enough. He can be blunt like that. So many unknown variables, so many words left unsaid. I wish he'd simply lay them all out in the open because like this, I'm more inclined to think there's an exaggeration on the other's part. If it's from Zachary or Ashton, I don't know. In the end, all I can do is wait, go about my day, and just hope for the best. Before leaving, I spare Isabella's room one last glance, disturbingly quiet, uh, now without her in here. I'll get answers from her later. For now, my concerns are best left here. Alright, so now we're in the afternoon of Tuesday. Yep. The rest of the day slips without a, uh, slips away in a blur. He's busy. He's teaching. Despite my best efforts in keeping this morning's events from surfacing in my mind, it, st it sticks. In a way, everything today simply feels like a reminder. Every conversation, regardless of how casual, every topic, no matter how mundane it seems. I blame the news entirely for this. Recent happenings brought quite a few uh, interesting stories to everyone's attention. Mostly superstitious talk of death. And when locals talk about death here, anyone can sure as hell count on someone bringing up that mansion Isabella sold just, uh, just not a few weeks ago. Not even my own students won't stop yapping about it. I think it's even worse than it was back when it was up on the market. Now there are just more stories. If this is the world reminding me of what matters, or simply because the atmosphere around this time of year calls for it, I'd rather take the latter. At least then, I can be sure people will forget about it in favor of another set of holidays after. Nevertheless, and this may be a painful thing to admit, but listening to them is a pleasant distraction, and while still waiting for Ashton's call. I hope he didn't forget me. The school day is about to end soon. No, that's got nothing with what I heard. Oh boy, a male student. You always hear stuff. I'm not sure if half of them's even real. No, really. Rowan knows about it. He used to be in the same class with them. I can hear you from back here, you know. Whatever, Rowan. It's funny. Anyway, the story goes like this. There were three of them. They entered the mansion on a dare, and they were all never seen again. <laughs> How rumors go. No one knows what happened to them up to this day. Scary shit, man. Cock and bull story. Calling it now. No, you don't get it. Why don't you ask Miss Gales then? Better yet, why don't you go inside the place? I'm betting my allowance you can't do it. Hmm. <laughs> their talk immediately halts when I look up, all of them suddenly pretending to be engrossed in their own current activity. Still, a word to put a stopper on this nonsense is needed. Creativity and imagination fostered by these stories is one thing, but reckless ideas should be corrected before anything potentially tragic comes from it. Back to your worksheets, everyone. And I don't want to hear any talk of dares or going inside that mansion. 
It's private property now. Yep, it's already been sold. You'd all better stay away from it before. Uh-oh. A loud knock. At that noise, the whole lot of them goes silent. You can almost hear a pin drop. The look on their faces would have made it uh, for a funny picture, but that's irrelevant at the moment. If that is a student loitering around, someone's going to be in trouble. I'll be back. If you're done, you can leave your worksheets on my desk. Keep the noise to a minimum while I'm gone, okay? I can sense their eyes are on me as I walk out the door. A muted kind of uh, anticipation. A bit unnerving, but this is far more agreeable than the feeling of being watched I've been enduring the past few days. All right, who is it? Class is still in session for most of the rooms. In a few hours, once the final bell rings, however, this place, this place will be once again filled with busy chatter and uh, footfalls, an everyday cycle in itself. But for the moment, I let the silence guide me, my ears focusing on whatever sounds there are or there will be, searching for that distinct clanging of metal. A good, a good moment passes, and for the portion of it, only my footsteps echoes through the halls. And another. I'm about to turn around when... Yeah, what's going to happen here? The sound of it halts my footsteps. It's a little muffled and infrequent, but it grows louder after every interval. This is actually kind of, uh, this is kind of terrifying, to be honest, guys. Uh, yeah, so, wow, I'm, uh, what the hell is this metal clanging about? With a hallway devoid of people, if I don't put a stop to it soon, it'll start to disturb the other classes that are still going on. Looking for it doesn't take long. All I do is follow the racket, and shortly I'm standing in front of a nondescript row of unoccupied lockers. So somebody's stuck in a locker? But these lockers are like, yeah, nobody could be stuck in, like they're not big enough for a person to be in there. Because there's two lockers up and down. What the hell? And from inside one of them, sitting in the middle, comes that noise. Annoyingly disruptive now that I'm facing it. Like someone's pounding on the metal door from the inside, just hoping to get out. Yeah, the music has changed as well. Leaning forward, I try to get a glimpse through the horizontal slats of whatever is causing the noise. But in this light, only darkness greets me in another round of clanging. That'd be horrifying. Louder than the previous one. More desperate. I've heard stories before from other schools from a few colleagues who had to deal with it once or twice. Although personally, I've never encountered one myself, and I can only thank the heavens that I haven't, yet. But... If this is another kid, some other student stuffed in a locker... That'd be crazy. That's a small locker to stuff a kid into. And with a huff, I straighten up and sturdy, or study it briefly with a frown. Without delay, I reach for its handle and... At once, it stops. Immediately replaced by the muffled sound of a mobile phone ringing. Oh my. I give the door a few uh, taps before taking my attention away. A second. Another. And when nothing or no one responds, I finally avert my eyes and I pull out my mobile phone. Ashton's voice greets me from the other end of the line. Oddly cheerful in light of the morning matters. Or maybe because I'm expecting some grave or serious news from him. Instead, I get this. Hey, Becca. Well, you sound happy. I do? My voice still sounds the same to me. There are only two things I know of that could be the reason for that tone. Weeds, or he's gotten a good lead in his case. And from the sound of it, I'm going to assume it's the former. Since lately, the case is all that's running inside his head. If there's ever a third one, I'll never, I've never heard of it yet. It can only be one of those two. Ignore that. How's Isabella? Drove her home a few minutes ago. I think she's sleeping now. Okay, so you drove her home and she's sleeping. Sorry this took a while. Seaman gave us the puppy eyes after we tried to leave. Had some food prepared for us, apparently. We didn't have the heart to say no. That's alright. 
Is she okay now? I... I'm not really sure. She didn't say anything to Zach, but she mentioned a plan to take a few days off from work. Oh, well. Wow. It was a passing comment before I left her, so I didn't get to ask. Must be because of Rose's death. Yeah. Could be. It doesn't seem like it from Zach's story, though. He said she was shaking when she got there. Oh, my. Yep, she was. Shaking? The word triggers a memory. From three days ago on my way home from her little treat after she sold the mansion. I didn't think that much of it at the time, but I won't lie, it did scare me. The terrified look on her face, how she sounded when she suddenly screamed. Becca? Still there? Yeah, I... I just remembered something. Uh, sorry, don't mind me. Look, if you can talk to her, get the story out of her. That would be great. She wouldn't talk to Zach or me even when I tried. Maybe she'll speak up if it's you? Maybe. I'll give it a go, but I can't promise anything, okay? You know how stubborn she can get. But thanks for letting me know about this. No problem. If anything comes up, just drop me a line, okay? And there's a short pause before he cuts the call from his end. And once again, I'm alone with just my thoughts. But rather than answers, all I got from it are questions. More of them. On, uh, one on top of the other. As if the world isn't planning to give me a break anytime soon. But that's a problem I'll tackle later. Right now, I've got students who need to be taught follies of eavesdropping. If the slightly open door in their sm uh, smothered laughter from the inside is any indication. Alright, enough eavesdropping. All of you, back to your seats. <laughs> is that your boyfriend? Oh Miguel? my god. None of your business. Uh, he totally is. A quick scuffle follows that comment. If there's a retort prepared at the tip of my tongue, I drop every pretense of it uh, by letting it loose on them. There's no use arguing with teenagers sometimes. Boisterous is all they all are. They're still my kids, though. Rough around the edges, maybe. But they're still my kids. Shaking my head, I head back to the classroom with a smile, but not before taking a glance at the locker once more. It hasn't made a sound since. Oh, must be the wind. See how she just completely... This is what she did when she saw the thing in the last uh, chapter, or last part, part 16. She saw the freaking zombie woman thing in her own back seat. And uh, it was growling and making the <laughs> sound and all that shit. It was horrifying. And she just blamed it on she's tired and sick. And now she's saying that this knocking on the locker, which all the students heard and everything, well, it must have just been the wind. Right. So, without another look, I leave it alone. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, man. And see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Seeing the blood come from all three lockers, just that scene and the sound effect, that actually rose the hairs up on my arms. It's terrifying. Like, there's so much here, like, it just makes your imagination go wild. And this is just one of the many reasons that I'm enjoying the hell out of the letter. Well, what the hell? How come the blood didn't show up, like, while she was sitting there looking at it? Or while she was on the phone with Ash? It's after she walks back to the classroom. All in all, the entire school day ends without a hitch. If you say so there, Rebecca. It could have gone much better, mind you, but with the exams nearing... Uh, getting out of work before the sun has uh, set looks as though it's a far-off dream for now. At least until they're over. Then we have the holidays to look forward to. Yeah, because it's like late October right now. There really are times when you simply take what you can get for the time being. Nothing wrong with that. All I'm hoping for uh, is for this to continue until the whole day ends. There's still that promise I made to Ashton, and frankly, the idea alone doesn't sound good. If Isabella didn't talk to them, what makes them think that she's going to talk to me? It's not like there's a hierarchy, is there? Just because I can handle Isabella's childish tendencies doesn't mean I can do it all the damn time. Really? Those two give me too much credit. Nevertheless, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, if only because I'm all, uh, also worried about her. 
In both Zachary and Ashton deem it important that somebody get the story of what happened out of her. What's going on with her? Here's hoping it's not going to do that again. Or here's to hoping it's got nothing to do with that letter again. Yep, we're, ta we're not talking about the letter that she got for her parents inviting them to the mansion, guys, earlier in this visual, uh, or this uh, part here. She's talking about the letter from way back in part one with Isabella, uh, point of view, and I think it showed up a couple other times early in you know, the first few parts that I read. The letter that Isabella found inside the mansion that had... Um, what the hell was it? I can't even remember. It was something written in blood over and over again. Uh, hell, I don't even remember. Hang on just a second. Let me think about it, guys. Give me a second. It said over and over the same thing in... Oh, by the way, guys, the letter is... Uh, it says, help me, over and over again. And, and this visual novel is on sale for just 6 bucks right now, 70% off. If anybody wants to play it themselves. Uh, that's just now while I'm reading this right now, guys. So if you're watching this on my YouTube channel six months after, it's probably not on sale. Yeah, I'm talking about early August 2024. So I understand it if she feels a bit of stress lately, but keeping that story going on for more than a week is... Hmm, it's bound to get tiring at some point. Seriously, I merely don't want to end this with another argument. God willing, the cafe special will help smoothen things out. After all, it's always been food with her. Or money. But mostly food. <laughs> So Tuesday in the evening, at this hour, the cafe is usually filled to the brim with people. That's the reason Isabella and I rarely go here uh, during the evenings. It's simply too much of a hassle when we can prepare food ourselves in the comfort of our own homes. And there really isn't much reason to eat out lately. And what with life going on with this busy street? No time for long lines? Better spend that doing something productive, yes. Lucky there isn't one tonight. Only a few people are idling around the counter. Four of them, in fact, a woman in her 60s and a teenager busy with his phone. Both are just waiting to be served their own orders. The other two, a posh-looking man and a child who I immediately recognize as Kylie, appear to have not picked up anything they want. Or picked anything that they want yet. For some reason, my stare lingers at the sky. Yeah, see, that's Hannah's husband. The jerk ass. Though dressed relatively well and looks harmless, I haven't seen him around these parts before. Someone new in the neighborhood, perhaps? Even so, there's something familiar in him. It feels like I've seen him someone, somewhere before. That all begs the question of why Kylie is with him. Of course, the girl easily takes a liking to anyone who buys her sweets. It's both a bit worrisome and unsurprising. The blonde bloke doesn't look particularly thrilled with the company, though. I tear my eyes away from them soon enough once the guy at the counter appears ready to take my order. That, and I'd also hate to be accused of oogling strangers. Two, evening special, take out. He's already punching the order before I finish. Saving my order out loud, or yeah, saying my order out loud is really more for formality's sake, and made out a habit. He has known Isabella and I long enough that if we ever drop by here, he already knows it's always because I'm buying dinner for the both of us. I rarely visit here alone if I can help it, but Isabella can sometimes be a bad influence. He gives me a small smile before leaving to prepare my order, while I fish for my wallet when... Look, you little ankle biter! If I buy you the biggest parfait they have, will you please, please behave? What the hell's going on here? This is obviously Luke. I would just like five, no, ten minutes of peace and quiet. You said you'll get me some bread pudding this time. Yeah, well, darling, they said they ran out of it. Just pick another one so we can be on our way. Wow, he's talking to a pretty evil. That parfait doesn't look as cute as the one my mom bought me. Parfait is just ice cream, sweetheart. It'll melt no matter how dainty it appears. 
In the end, it all looked like an ugly puddle. Now come on, just pick one. It could even be the most expensive one on that list. I don't give a shit. Care, I don't care. Oh, uh, what I would give for someone to buy you off my hands right now. Wow. What? My whole attention instantly snaps back to them and their conversation. Jumping to conclusions uh, isn't something I'm particularly fond of, especially when all I have are baseless assumptions. But you can't really just trust a stranger these days. Now, what the hell's going on with Luke and Kylie here, and why is he buying her sweets and telling her to hurry up? This is... And again, this is what I'm talking about with this visual novel and take it, taking twists and turns and being, you know, full of surprises. You never know where the hell this story is going to go. Give me just a second, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is bizarre. No one around the cafe seems to have noticed his words either. Very suspicious words. Still, I don't make a move. Yet... But my hand has already shifted to my wallet for the book that I'm carrying. A hardbound textbook. It looks harmless, but if a situation calls for it, it might be a good, deadly weapon? A book? Come on. It might. Yeah, exactly. I haven't gotten the chance to try it anywhere so far. Today could be the day? Come on. But you promised! Look, if you don't want a parfait, how about... How about a Bonifee pie? I'm sure it'll taste just as good as any other bread pudding. I'll even buy you the entire tray. How does that sound? He just wants to get out of there. That's not what you said before. Well, sweetheart, adults change their minds sometimes. You said if I come with you, you'll buy me a bread pudding, and I did. And now you won't keep your promise. Oh. I want to go home. She seems like kind of a spoiled brat right now. I know we've seen her talking to Zachary or whatever, and I think to Rebecca in the last part or whatever, and she seemed like kind of a sweet little girl. Now, at this point, but Luke is a... We already know Luke's a freaking dick from hell. But yeah, she's kind of seeming like a spoiled brat too here. No, darling, if I remember correctly, and I have a good memory, honey. What I said was, if you come quietly with me, I might buy you one. The quiet part didn't happen. Uh -huh. Though now that I'm sober, I think this is a bad idea. I should just ship you someplace else for that peace and quiet. Oh, that's it. No hesitation. In a few paces, he's within my reach, and without warning, I'm slamming the flat area of the book against his damn skull. What the hell? I mean, I know he's being a jerk, but why would she get up and smack him upside the head with a book? This is so crazy. Ow! There's a cry of pain, followed by him instantly crouching down, hands nursing the sore spot. Almost comically, if this were a different situation and the safety of St. Uh, Goretti's student isn't at stake, I'd probably feel sorry for him. I mean, has anyone seen how thick this damn book is? Get behind me, Kylie! Damn. <gasps> Miss Pink! It's amusing how fast her expression changes from the pouty one earlier to something of utter delight upon seeing me. But there's no time for any pleasantries, not even quick ones, because soon the man straightens, and I'm readying my favorite newfound weapon for another hit. Yeah, he's mad now. Except this time, he's ready. And before I can land another one, his hand shoots up to catch my wrist in a firm hold. Oh wow, look at that. Look at that art. And the look on his face. Evil. Definitely evil. Bloody hell, woman! What's your problem? To say he's pissed would be a complete understatement. Yeah, I never thought that was gonna be a good idea. Had I been weak had I been the weak willed sword, I'd probably tower under this sharp of a gaze. But that simply isn't how I roll. If he thinks he can stare, uh, scare me and do as he pleases right here, that's because of just because I'm a woman or whatever his reasons might be, he's got another thing coming for him. What the hell's she gonna do? Yeah, that artwork is fantastic, though. I love it. So instead, I return it to him with the same intensity and the same venom. What's my problem? 
You're the one who has a problem here. Rotten bow bags like you don't deserve the freedom to run this town. What are you doing to this girl? Yeah, that's a good question. And why is that any of your business, pray tell? Oh, it's my business if I make it to be. Now, release me or I'll call the police. <laughs> you think that scares me, Daisy? I have a name, you sleazy douchebag. Hmm. Oh, I'm sure. He is a sleazy douchebag, for sure. His grip on my hand only tightens when I attempt to shake it off. His tone may be dripping with anger and sarcasm, but the gleam in his eyes says it all. He's getting a kick out of this. Riling people up, getting on their nerves, invading their own personal space. He knows exactly what and which buttons to push. The nerve of this damn person. The nerve of this asshole. If he thinks I'm going to give in to his goatee, please, he might as well just kiss his sorry ass behind. I love her attitude. I love her fight. In fact, why not do the most sensible thing right now and teach him a tough lesson? Ooh, now this might be a decision I make that has a huge impact on how the whole story ends. Hit him where it hurts or shout for help. I like the fighting, and remember guys, I always said in these visual level choices, sometimes I don't make the choice that I think is the best, and I think shouting for help would probably be the best and smartest choice, but based on the fight that she has in her, the own anger she already has for, you know, one of the students she knows in her school, Kylie, and the way he was, you know, talking to her, uh, with that evil, harsh, like, you know, attitude that he had, yeah, I think that she might... Especially with his grip on her hand and everything like that, I think she might try to hit him where it hurts. Whether it's going to succeed or not, I don't know. It might mean that he hits her back or whatever. But we're going to find out what happens when she at least tries to hit him where it hurts. Is I'm guessing that she's going to knee him in the nuts. And that'll be pretty freaking funny if she does. I mean, hitting him where it hurts, so that would be exactly what I would expect. I expect a knee right to his groin. And I think he deserves it, being honest. He's a freaking asshole from hell. We're gonna go hit him where it hurts. Mister, you have until the count of five to let me go and step out of my personal space. A fair warning. Fairer than any I can offer for people of his kind. And I'm already being considerate. Hell, this asshole doesn't even deserve a warning. Yeah, I think she's right there. If he doesn't listen, well... He's much responsible for uh, what will happen next, as anything. Or else what? Oh boy, look at that grin on his face. Such vulgar words coming out of that pretty mouth. Look at this, you his name... You like you shouldn't even be saying. His name's not even there, but of course this is how she sees him. She doesn't know his name, she doesn't know that he's Luke. She doesn't know that he's the husband of Hannah, uh, the owner of the big haunted mansion that everybody's talking about. Slazy douche is how she knows him. Such vulgar words coming out of that pretty mouth. A gorgeous flower like you shouldn't even be saying. Don't say I didn't warn you, Bobag. Damn, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Love of that intensity, Daisy. Uh. FYI, I like feisty in a woman. Why don't you? Okay, so he said, he said I like feisty in a woman. It gives them certain charm. So he's getting, he's... He's probably getting aroused by all this, if nothing else. He definitely... Yeah, this guy is a sleazebag. Yeah, I bet you his relationship with him has went down. Uh, yeah, Luke. Yeah, definitely went down a lot. It's probably going to go down more after she needs him in the nuts or whatever she's going to do. Why don't you... Is she going to do it right now? Five. Nope. A second of silence. And then without any preamble, my legs move in one fluid motion and delivers a swift, powerful, well-placed kick to his nether regions. Hey, I called that, didn't I? Needless to say, the effect is instantaneous. He yelps abruptly, drops his hold on me, and kneels over, howling from the pain. Love it. Absolutely love it. I said I was going to love it if she needs him right in the nuts. I can see tears forming at the corner of his eyes, too, though the mere sight of it prompts uh, not an ounce of remorse for me. 
Hey, I, I give her credit. She defended herself and she gave him fair warning. And he did not let go. In fact, he found it almost like a game. He treated it like a game and yeah, he thought it was actually amusing or whatever. So he got fair warning and she made the best of it. Uh, hell yeah to, uh, hell yeah to Rebecca. Good job. I would have been gentler if he wasn't such a dirty little prick with an ego way too big for his head. Too bad. Whether this obliterates any chance of him ever procreating remains to be known. But a part of me is already paying he doesn't ever breathe after this. Well, I can see that. We have no need for more of him in this world. You... you mad woman! Damn. I warned you, you ass. She did warn you, you dude. Why you? This is harassment, I'm telling you. Harassment. Harassment. We call it harassment here in the U.S. I'm just saying. Then why don't you tell that to the police once they get here? Hmm? You despicable. Uh. Whatever you're assuming I am, I'll have you know it's all in your head. None of it's true. You best have that pretty brain of yours checked before that gets worse. What is wrong with you? Is this the face of someone who'd do anything suspicious? Oh my god. Oh? You don't think a stranger luring an innocent child with promises of sweets before whisking them away from their parents doesn't warrant any suspicion? You have a very funny definition of suspicious, asshole. Maybe you're the one who should have that head of yours checked. Yeah, I can't disagree with her. I mean, it is pretty fucking vile and sickening to see him, see him in here. Uh, having such disgust for a young child buying her sweets. Like, what the hell's up with all that? The kid asked me to buy her sweets. You're the one who's suspicious here. I'll have you know, I have a wife. That much, Elise, appears to have a, a sliver of truth to it. He even makes a show of brandishing his left hand in my face with much flourish. Sure enough, a wedding ring is there. Though all that earned him is an unimpressed glare from me. Immediately, a small part of me starts to feel sorry for whoever, whatever poor woman married this son. Well, yeah. I don't under understand why he has to bring her up either, as if the mention of her alone will magically present a solution to his problems. She must be truly a remarkable woman if she can handle a dirtbag like him. So this is good because remember she's already promised her lovely ma and pa uh, that because they can't go to Hannah's uh, housewarming party that she's gonna go in their pre you know go for them. So she's gonna be going to his mansion, his housewarming party this Friday night. It's Tuesday night right now. Three days she's headed to his house. And she has no idea that he is the husband of Hannah. This is this is good shit, man. And even my wife, my wife of all people in this bloody city, has never, never, I'm telling you, accused me of such a scandalous thing! You crazy woman! Damn, he is mad. Married or not, you're still a sleaze. <laughs> Honestly, I feel... Miss Pink, why are you fighting with my teal? My teal? Whatever words still left to be said here dies on my tongue. The same thing goes for the sleaze. Beside us stands Kylie gawking at us with the same curious stare she often brings with her. I know that look all too well, a precarious child through and through. She doesn't say anything further, her gaze simply moves between us, eyeing us both carefully clearly anticipating an answer. From my experience, when it gets like this with children her age, it's a sure sign they won't leave you until you've given them an answer that they're satisfied with. Lying won't do it either. It is dissolved into a shouting match, for heaven's sake. And did she just say Teo? Something falls straight to the pit of my own stomach at that. But my tone is gentle when I finally address her void of any apprehension and what might be the first hints of embarrassment. I pointedly ignore the latter. I can very well be just the uh, hunger speaking. Kylie, sweetie, do you know this, this 
This oaf? Yeah, he's Tio Wu. And right at that moment, my brain stopped. Every line of thought, every argument I still have against the man beside me dissipates in a haze. Amidst all of it, one memory gets triggered from just a few days ago. T Tio? The... the one you mentioned before? The uncle? The guy Rowan wanted to impress? Or, or was that a dare? I'm sorry, I can't recall. Is it the one who promised he'll take Big Brother someplace cool? Yeah, the one in the same! Don't you know who he is? I sure as hell don't, darling. Huh, she says to herself. Uh, because if I do, I wouldn't have uh, let everything I've said earlier come out of my mouth. He's my T.O. Luke! Gazillionaire, extraordinaire, and my... No, the Fairy Godfather! She calls him the Fairy Godfather. And she calls him a gazillionaire extraordinaire. Uh oh. 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 You're... He's your godfather. He's That's... her godfather. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, she's got to feel like a complete fool right now. She's got to be super embarrassed. Oh my god. The one and only. Did I get that right, Tio? More than right, sweetheart. I'm sure Miss Pink here understood everything you said quite perfectly. Yeah, he's enjoying this now. That makes sense why he was actually calling her sweetheart and everything like that. He's her godfather. It does make sense now. Whatever it is that landed at the bottom of my stomach prior has shot straight up to my face and stayed there. She's got to be blushing like hell. The heat from it slowly spreading to my cheeks, coloring my face in almost the same shade as my own hair. If only the earth would swallow me whole here and now. Yeah, she's definitely wanting to go put her head in the sand like a freaking ostrich or whatever. Uh, his eyes are on me. I can feel them jeering, mocking. I can't even bring myself to look at him. But what's in there? Amusement? I doubt it. He's probably having the time of his life right now. But I know I can hear the sneer in his tone alone when he talks. Yeah, it doesn't matter. She's still right. He still is a creep from hell. He still is the asshole that she accused him of or said to him. He has that smug grin on him. Which I may or may not want to punch his uh, punch off his face at present. But the hell, uh, just for the hell of it. But she still wants to punch it. But damage control. I need to do some damage control before this whole thing goes south. Um, apologize to Luke or apologize to Kylie? Um, I think she's going to apologize to Kylie first. Because Kylie's the one that is a young, innocent child. That's what I would do. And I think that's probably what she would do too. I think she hates this motherfucker. Of course, an apology is the most appropriate thing to say. But no matter how much I will myself to do it, my own body refuses to budge. My own mouth refuses to open, and my head rejects the very idea of even looking at him. No apology for the asshole. Not to someone with an ego way too big for his own head. Let his pride suffer. I'm not going to eat my words for the sake of stroking his damn ego. Less reason for him to gloat. Kylie, however, I do owe an explanation. Don't worry, Kylie. I'm not fighting with your Tio. This is just a... Uh, discussion. <laughs> That's a lie. A very serious discussion between a very mature adult and one that's not. <laughs> really? But I've never seen Tio angry before. Yeah, he still looks mad. It's because he's losing the argument. <laughs> I love her wit there. I love her wit. But don't ever follow his example, Kylie. You should always learn to be patient, even if things aren't going your way, okay? Oh, sure, a discussion. And it involves hitting random strangers you meet at a cafe with a book. Mm -mm. A hard-bound book. Mind you, the little me hasn't recovered yet. The little me? Yeah, the, the dick that she fucking need you in? Yeah, that's what you are, is a big dick, I agree. The little me hasn't recovered yet. If my future generation never survives from this, we are going to have more than words, woman! Yeah, he's still mad at her. 
I don't allow Kylie to hear his uh, tirade and cover both her ears with my own hands. As fond as she is of this man, there are words he shouldn't be saying in front of a child. How can he not know about that? More importantly, how on earth did someone like him become a godfather? Who the hell allowed this? Maybe I should talk to Miss uh, Suarez about it. Warn her uh, that he's not a good influence for her children. Language! How can you use such crude words in front of her? Your goddaughter can hear you, for heaven's sake. Oh, and you didn't. If I remember everything correctly, you called me a rotten bow. Mm -mm. So you're going to repeat it in front of her, just to make a point? What, are you five? Even five-year-olds are more sensible than you. Well, she's not wrong. Even Isabella, I can say that without with much certainty. Even five-year-olds are more sensible than you. Now he's fucking mocking her. This guy is just a complete ass. There's no doubt about that. He is an absolute ass. Yeah, I haven't liked Luke since, uh, like, many, many, uh, parts ago. Yeah, I haven't liked him since, like, part two. Chapter two. We're in chapter five now. See what I mean? Are you fighting again? <laughs> Kylie asks a perfect question. An innocent child. Oh, no, no, no. Like I said, we were just having a discussion. We're actually done now. Yeah, because we're not going to talk anymore. But you need to promise Miss Pink you will never grow up like <laughs> this guy. Good kids don't do what he's doing. <laughs> I like Rebecca. I do like Rebecca now after all this. What I like, Tio. Aw. And I'm quite sure Tio likes you too. But liking people is different. Just because you like him doesn't mean you have to be like him. There are meta role models for you aside from him. Mm-hmm. Like you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Not exactly what I'm trying to get at. But if that's what you want, I don't see why not. Okay, I want to be like Miss Pink someday. I want to be a teacher. Uh -uh. And I promise I won't be like Tio. Even if he's a gazillionaire. A gazillionaire. That's funny. I don't think he's uh, going to be getting any less mad. Wow. Turning my own goddaughter against me. How mature of you, Miss Pink. Hmm. His tone makes me pause. And for the first time since this whole talk started, I just look at him. Briefly, something flashes behind his eyes. Something close to what might be an expectation falling? Dismay? I can't be sure. It passes almost as soon as it appears. But what's about that? Does he... Does he actually like having Kylie around? He sure didn't seem like it. He seemed like he was in a rush and just fucking... You know, telling her to buy something, anything. He just wants to get out of there. It doesn't seem like it from the get-go. But, if that fond smile on him is anything to judge by, then maybe... Don't worry, Teal. If you buy me bread pudding tonight, I'll like you again. <laughs> Isn't that something a kid would say? Oh, if that's all it takes, consider it done, sweetheart. We might have to find another place to buy it from, though. Somewhere safe, where a random crazy woman isn't going to attack us out of the blue. <laughs> He's definitely getting his shots in. Let's go. Okay. Bye, Miss Pink. I still like you, just not more than Tio anymore. Just not more than Tio anymore. Aww. See you. Kylie's already pulling him to the next uh, cafe's exit before I can protest on it. Although it's not like there's anything to object on further. I may view that man Luke as someone hateful, maybe to the point of seeing him as an eyesore, but I don't think that'll have any bearing on what the child thinks of him. So the important thing here, guys, is she does not yet know that Luke is Hannah's husband, and that she's going to be going to this housewarming party on Friday and run into him again. And when you think about it, if she admires him so much like that, then maybe there's still something agreeable in him. A part of him only likes the... Uh, wait a minute, a part of him only Kylie sees. He still has the gall to wink at me before they both disappear behind the door, so maybe not. However, there is no moment to ponder about it. 
Seconds later, the guy at the counter waves me over and hands me a paper bag as soon as I paid. He offers me another smile before I leave. Normally, I return it simply for the sake of returning it, or I don't at all, and with the latter happening more commonly, for the first time, I do so freely. After that encounter, and the scene we cause, seeing a friendly gesture being extended to me, albeit from a person I barely know on a personal level, it feels like a reassurance, despite bearing no promise of better days to come. I take what little I can of it with me as I step out into the night. Now we're in the evening of Tuesday evening. A cloudless night sky greets me when I walk out of the cafe. Beyond the tall buildings, a blanket of stars spreads out before me. Isabella once told me that the best place to view is someplace outside the city, away from the noise and the obtrusive light. She'd seen it once in her mom's hometown and another time in the university she used to attend. Then she asked me if it's possible to try it out. Uh, she asked me if it's possible to try it out sometime. I agreed with her at the time, but only because she appeared excited about the mere prospect of it. We made those little plans along with Zachary and Ashton. Though up to now, we never got around to it. That sounds like life. That sounds like real life. Even so, I find myself enjoying this, despite being told it's only half the experience. So my question is, did her relationship just go up with Isabella just because she remembers that? It did. Yep. Or Definitely her relationship with Luke went way down with all that bickering and the kick in the nuts and everything like that and the way he was treating Kylie. But just from Isabella's recalling Isabella's uh, word, she, her relationship with her went up just a little bit. Little things, you know, stuff you learn to appreciate when you're out here alone. Because at certain times you get to meet people who are, who are unfortunately born with the innate talent to ruin the mood and the scene with their mere existence alone. People like Luke. For example, the very driver of the car fast approaching in my direction. Luckily, he doesn't even notice me. But the fleeting moment we pass each other by, he gives me a brief glance and the people he's with. Oh wow, it's Luke, of course. Kylie's sitting on the back seat with a serving of bread pudding in her hands. Yep, what do you know? But who is that in the car with Luke? We've seen her before, guys. We have definitely seen her before. In fact, in chapter 16, we saw her in the back seat of uh, Rebecca's own car. And beside him, it must be his wife? Yeah, I don't think so. He takes a turn and disappears at the nearest corner. But throughout the night, that cursory glimpse of all things to bother me has left me wondering what kind of person his wife is. And more than that, it's a silent prayer for the universe. I hope I don't ever cross paths with that douchebag again. And that's what makes us good, guys. We know that she's going to cross paths with him again in just a few days. After having such an eventful day, anyone uh, will... Uh, think n nothing will surprise me anymore. But here I am standing atop the stairwell, watching an odd scene unfold before me. Relief crosses my mind first, followed by confusion. What is she doing there? Although given what happened this morning, the question feels a bit inappropriate to ask directly. It's Isabella. What's important is that Isabella is here. She's sitting cross-legged in the hallway, just right in front of her room, with several papers and folders scattered about. Each of them seems as important as the next. More than once, upon giving the scene a quick scan, I spot Briar Realty's logo at the topmost area of the pages. Everything's con everything considered, it looks like a mess made by a third grader working on, a cr on crunch time. The landlady will have a few things to say about this when she finds out. I have a few things to say about this myself, in fact. But something in the calm, focused manner she holds herself, at present, keeps me from disturbing her with that reminder. She's going through each paper with this intensity. 
Her brows are furrowed, lips in a tight line, both hands moving in precise movements as she shifts through each sheet. And when she finds something of note, she moves closer, nose almost touching whatever paper she's holding, and grabs her phone to call someone. Ah, uh, hello. Sorry to call you this late. There's something I just want to confirm, if that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks anyway. Not that one either. Hmm. It's a cycle. She goes through call after call. And then after the last one in, she shuffles through the pile again and dials yet another number. Is it work? I've never seen her this engrossed with her own work before. Otherwise, she would have uh, she would have noticed my presence in the moment I reached her floor. After the ninth call, she still peer appears as oblivious to it as when I first arrived. And when she lets out a loud sigh this time, I immediately take that as an opportunity to interrupt. Isabella, you know the house rules here. At once, her head jerks back and hits the concrete wall behind her with a thump. There's the Isabella I know, and I'm glad it's still there. I allow her a moment to nurse it before speaking again. Becca, you're late! Yeah, I ran into a little trouble at the cafe. But, I brought food for the two of us, if you haven't eaten anything yet. And as anticipated, she grins once I raise the bag of food I'm holding. Yet it doesn't reach her eyes. There's nothing of the cheerful glint in it this time. Just a hollow tone for the sake of being polite. Ashton's right. Something happened. Yeah, I... maybe later. I've got to finish this first. Just leave it here. I'll eat it once I'm done. Thanks, Becca. You can't eat this here. You know how the landlady would react. Why are you even working outside? Your room's right there. That's a good question. I, I know. Sorry. It, it just feels stuffy in my apartment right now. I'll go back inside once everything's been aired out. I promise. That has never bothered you before. Yeah, she's got a good, quite, good point right here. Well, it bothers me now. Hmm. Oh, really? Just now? I find that hard to believe. Yeah? Sh shouldn't you be happy? I mean, you've been complaining even if it's not your room. That it's that our room, that our apartment's so messy. Now I know how you're feeling when it's messy, so I'm going to clean. Isn't that a good thing? In spite of what's supposed to be good news, an XL comes for me. A drawn out and slow. It's a good thing, Isabella. Believe me. But you're as bad as Zachary at lying. What's really going on? She hastily averts her eyes, a surefire indicator this is going to be one of those lengthy conversations uh, that, ca that can possibly end up with the other person angry. Uh-oh. Again. It's one thing I'd like to avoid tonight at all costs. Still, I've made a promise to Ashton and to Zachary. If she didn't talk to them, who else is she going to talk to? And if she keeps this all to herself, who knows what might happen. Isabella, you can tell me. Oh, wow. Is she gonna say anything? Is it about your family? A slight movement of her lips, although a frown. It's a reaction, at least. I'm getting there. Rose? She merely shakes her head, so it's not the Rose's death. Just a little more. Come on, I know something happened. I don't know if it's because of Rose, but I know it's related to her somehow. You weren't here when I visited this morning, and both Zachary and Ashton are worried about you. If you don't want to tell them, you can tell me. Does it have something to do with work? Office? If I didn't know her, I might have missed it. She shifts then, her fists clenching tight and teeth biting her lower lip. And there's... fear. The look of terror in her is the last thing I expected to see out of everything. Her mouth trembles briefly before she opens them. When she finally voices it out, the words simply spill out of her mouth. One after another. Oh shit, man, this is good. All of it. True to what I've promised her, I listen. Because this is something she's been keeping to herself. 
even from the two most dependable people I know. The fact that she chooses to tell me speaks a lot to me. Becca, she... she was there again. Last night? In the office? Boss passed me all of Rose's lore glowed yesterday. For the Ermengarde mansion. I had to stay late to finish them all. And then... and then... when I was about to go home... I saw her. I saw her again. Yep. She was standing in front of me again last night, Becca. I couldn't get away. She was she was blocking the door. Oh my. If I hadn't hidden myself, even if I made the tiniest noise, if she found me. She's scared to death. Becca, she almost did. And Rebecca has seen the same same bitch in her the backseat of her car, the zombie bitch or whatever she is from the haunted mansion. If she saw me under my table, I I think that would have been the end of it. No, oh, she's crying. Look at that. She's crying out of fear. I'm scared. Yep. I'm so scared I won't be able to do anything. That's terrifying. That's sad, too. And by the end, her hands are trembling and her breathing comes out in rasping intervals. For a long moment, I let the silence stretch out between us, and I let her sobs fill it instead. But even as her soft whimpers die down moments later, there's a heaviness hanging in the air. Not just from her, but also from me. From my exasperation over this whole matter, my own frustrations over her stupid superstitions, when she could just do us a favor and grow a backbone. She may be young, but she's no longer that young. It's about time to put an end to this. She can't keep going on like this. She's still got plenty of years to live it out. And what if she goes home? What if they're, uh, What if we're no longer here to keep her fears in line with what's real? What would she do then? I'm more afraid for her, for what kind of imagination or what that kind of imagination might do to her than of what some imaginary monster could do. Yeah, see, so she's scared for her. She's scared of, she's scared for her friend Isabella or her neighbor Isabella and what the, uh, her own imagination and her own fear might do to her. You know, she's afraid that she might, you know, do something completely stupid trying to get away from this horrifying thing but the fact remains that Rebecca saw this thing in her own back seat just last night and she chooses to simply call it her own imagination call it her own sickness making her think that her own weariness or whatever where Isabella sees the same thing and doesn't think it's her imagination she actually believes it's real she it is real and uh, that's kind of what makes me, you know, I've always wondered, you know, like if I ever really did see a ghost in real life or whatever, I probably wouldn't even recognize it because I'd probably do the same thing as Rebecca. I'd probably be like, oh, that was my imagination or that was the lights being just right and, you know, the, the shadows being just right or my imagination being just right. And I, of course, I didn't really see a ghost. It was uh, nothing. It was just because I was tired or whatever, right? And I think a lot of us are like that. But Isabella is certainly, you know, she believes what she sees and she doesn't uh, put seeing an actual real monster as uh, her own imagination or whatever. But with the manner she's looking at me right now, there's an expectation in it, a hope and a plea all sewn together. She wants me to believe her this time. If it's like that, then what am I supposed to say right now? What she wants to hear, or what she needs to hear, this is why you don't, this is why you didn't go home last night, or this again? No, I think I'm gonna take, I think I'm gonna take the thing that's gonna build our relationship more, and I think I'm going to try to comfort her more than just do an exasperated this again, Isabella? No, I think I'm gonna be her friend. Oh, hang on, guys. Hang on. Oh, my God. Stupid thing.
So I kept hearing a glass shatter, and I kept hearing something in the distance. And I had the, I had the visual novel, I had the trailer playing. I, I, I apologize deeply if that came through in the background. I just paused it. I kept thinking I heard like a shattering glass in the background. I'm like, what the hell is that? It was actually the trailer for this visual novel playing on the store page. I'm sorry if, uh, if that came through anywhere. Um, as much as I want to set her straight, a reprimand isn't what she needs right now. I agree. And I mean, that's the choice I made. With that pouty face that she's given me, I doubt it'll even end well if I push it. I know her. When she wants to be stubborn, she is stubborn. But there are moments when she can be, uh, aqua uh too. Uh, at times when she'll be more accepting of what I tell her despite her inclination to disagree with it. That talk and wait. In the meantime, I'll be the ear that listens to her without judging her, without criticizing her, despite my own opinions on it. And I guarantee you our relationship went up with that choice. Yeah, look a lot. Our relationship went up a lot with that choice to listen to her. You should have called me. <laughs> she stares at me like I've grown another head, and a laughter slips out before I can stop myself. There? I can't do that! What will you do? Hit her with a book? You'll be dead before that happens! And that isn't what I'm talking about. After, after you got out, you should have phoned me. You didn't have to go to Zachary's. And the corners of her mouth curl up into a smile, a sheepish smile. And by general definition, but this is Isabella. Her smiles are never half-hearted, never lacks her high spirits. In spite of this, I know everything's going to be okay. Somehow. After all, she's learned how to pick herself up long ago, long before we met. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I don't even remember how I ended up in Zack's place. I was in a hurry to get out of the office. And it was already late. Besides, I don't really think you'll believe me if I wake you up over something like that. Mm. That's beside the point. True or not, there are people who will always be concerned about you. There's Zachary, but he's the first person you went to, and you didn't tell him anything. You just slept there. There's... there's Ashton too, and me. No. But how do you think I'll be able to explain to your aunt or your family if you suddenly disappeared? Think about that. Yeah, she's got a good point. Right, right. I'll remember that next time. And then she grins. Playful and mischievous, a preamble to an old bit banter. It's still not quite there, still not quite her usual self, but with it, I know we're bound to get her back soon. Mom, I told you not to call me that. Uh -uh. <laughs> I send her an elbow to her side for added measure. And when laughter follows a familiar gesture, none of it is unexpected. This is what's comfortable. This is how we found an equal ground despite our stink, or our stark differences. Uh, for the moment, I accept things as they are. Afterwards, a hush stretches out before us. For Isabella, this is rare. This isn't her. Yet in this moment, as she fiddles with the edge of another paper near her, as she hugs her knees close to herself and lets a pensive expression linger on her, it feels strangely fitting. As if this were everything supposed to be uh, to lead us, uh, wait a minute. As if this is where everything's supposed to lead uh, to if we're allowed it long ago. Seconds later, the moment is broken by the sound of a door easing open and a voice begging some for some little peace. How many times have I told you girls not to loiter around the hallway? It's noisy. Some people here are trying to sleep. And that is the landlady. Yeah, that's not good. Quiet down or go do your talking inside. I'm pinning a memo to your door the next time this happens. Damn. <sighs> Millennials. Hmm. Sorry. We won't do it again. You'd better. The door closes and Isabella starts gathering the mess she's made, carefully stacking them all in her arm. At a loss for what to do, I help her pick them, and for the first time, I get a closer look at it. Completely unintentional, of course. 
but it catches my attention nevertheless, and a confused frown makes my way to my face. Why is she looking through this? I look to her for an explanation, but she merely ignores the question in my eyes, takes the paper off my hands, and finishes cleaning up. The last paper she puts on top is a letter. The one she supposedly found in the mansion and what's uh, probably the root cause of her odd behavior. Yeah, the letter that says, uh, help me, help me. I shoot her a questioning look for that as well. But all she gives me is a smile. And in a halting tone, though completely unlike her. Becca, I'll, I'll find a way out of this. You guys don't have to worry about me. Anyways, I should go. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Getting myself some food. Don't wait for me. Isabella walks away before I can stop her, before I can uh, remind her that I've brought food enough for the two of us. She quickly disappears down the stairwell, while I'm left standing in an empty hallway, holding two bags of takeout. One of them will go uneaten tonight. Just an innocent passing thought. One that I don't dwell much on as I head back to my own room. I ignore all of it in the same way I've assumed I won't ever encounter that douchebag again. Yeah. Alright, hey guys, I want to go ahead and thank you guys for watching. Um, this was another long uh, part, usually they're right around an hour, but the last couple have definitely been on the longer side. As we continue to go through these lengthy days with Rebecca, we're getting a lot more information uh, than I feel like we've gotten in a long time. From Rebecca's point of view so it's been really really good I thought uh, or I think I'm still really enjoying the letter uh, this has been part 17 guys and uh, we'll be back with live stream of the moonshine number 310 and part 18 here probably in the next couple of days I hope uh, because I am off the next couple of days so I want to go and thank you guys for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed this part so anyway guys I want to go and thank you guys for being here we'll be back with the letter more of it uh, here soon Thanks for watching. Be sure you comment down below. Be sure you rate this video if you're watching it over on my YouTube channel. We'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace. Take care.